All right, so who am I? Alfred already introduced me pretty well. I run Ivan on Tech, and it's a YouTube channel all about cryptocurrencies. And I studied here at KCH just uh, last year, uh, computer science. But then the whole YouTube thing exploded, and now we're also uh, consulting and educating governments, organizations, and companies about blockchain, how blockchain can be implemented, how blockchain can fight corruption, how blockchain can fight hyperinflation, and really make the world a better place. Because for many years, cryptocurrencies and blockchain really received bad press. It is only for scams, it's only for washing money, it's only for all of these terrible things. But now, partly due to our work as well, uh, people are starting to realize the bigger potential. And uh, that, that is what I want to share with you today. And actually, when we're talking about blockchain, we're talking about a whole new space of companies, a whole new space of startups, and a whole new industry full of opportunities. And the reason why it's so interesting it's, uh, is because it combines three very interesting areas, three very interesting aspects, namely technology, economics, and society. So I personally, I joined because I'm very into technology. I've been programming since I was nine, so I'm very, very into the tech side of things. But then you get interested and you realize the economic potential, the economic significance of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, such as Ethereum, and then also the effects this will have on society when we have a whole new way to do business, to structure the internet, and to create new business models, which we will talk about later in this speech as well. So I guess all of you have heard about Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, to give you a small introduction, has a few good properties. And these properties is something that we always need to keep in mind when we're thinking about doing business on the blockchain today. Number one is decentralization. We have no single entity controlling the business. No central bank, no uh, no company controlling and verifying everyone's, um, everyone's business. It's all done peer-to-peer, -peer. it's all decentralized. That is number one. Number two, it is trustless. You and I, we don't have to trust each other. We know that the blockchain, which is the technology behind Bitcoin, will ensure that you have the money you promised me, and in that way we say that blockchain technology is trustless. We don't trust each other, we trust the protocol that Bitcoin is, for example, or Ethereum. All these cryptocurrencies and blockchain projects are really just protocols. They are languages that computers use to communicate with each other. So the Bitcoin movement started with cryptocurrencies in 2008. And uh, we saw Litecoin, we saw many other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin um, emerge as well. But then something significant happened later on. How many of you know who this guy is? Some people know. Okay, so who, who is it? J raise your hand. Yeah, who, and what did he do? Yeah, so he, he invented, the, he was one of the co-founders behind Ethereum, which is the second largest cryptocurrency currently. And the difference here is that now we have logic on the blockchain. Bitcoin has a very simple scripting language. It's called script. You can do simple logic. For example, you can, uh, you can have multi-sig accounts so that in order to spend a piece of Bitcoin, you need several people to sign that transaction. So this is an example of how we can add simple logic to the blockchain. But so Vitalik, this guy, he thought, what if we add a Turing complete, a fully functional programming language to the blockchain so that we can write applications that run in this decentralized way without any server, without any central entity, applications and software that runs uh, in, in this decentralized manner. And so he tried to pitch to the Bitcoin guys that, come on, let, let's create a Turing complete language on Bitcoin. But that didn't get much traction. How many of you know what Turing complete means? Some nerds, no. <laughs> but basically, a Turing complete language can solve any computational problem, theoretically. And Bitcoin doesn't have that. But Vitalik wanted to add such a language so that we can write any application possible. Uh, and that is how Ethereum were, was created. And it's not that Bitcoin couldn't implement a, a Turing complete language. It just was by design not included. And we can talk later about why, but this is the reason Ethereum was born. Uh, and uh, this has huge impact on the industry. Ethereum li really opened up industrial use cases. And this is where the whole startup movement and people interested in starting new companies uh, entrepreneurs, that, that is what is interesting about blockchain currently. It is doing these applications that are run in a decentralized way. 
because there are many pain points in different industries that can be solved and that can be addressed with this technology. And we will talk about very soon which. Uh, let's see, oh, this is an old version. Anyway, I had a picture here from Norway. And uh, the thing is, in Norway, we see huge developments when it comes to blockchain technology. They have incubators working with blockchain. They have uh, a whole new emergent, emerging sector of startups working with blockchain. While this is something that is missing in Sweden currently. And uh, something very important to realize is that in Sweden, we usually talk about how you know, innovative and digital we are. We have Spotify, we have Ericsson, we have um, all of these companies. But the thing is, when it comes to blockchain, when it comes to this new sector, Sweden is really behind. And when we travel to Singapore, when we travel to New York or to uh, Switzerland, you really see that uh, it's a whole other atmosphere when it comes to people, startups, even uh, governments and regulators working with this technology. So let's talk more specifically about uh, industrial use cases and how you can use this technology. So first of all, you have the public and the private blockchains. So example of a public blockchain is Bitcoin. Everyone can use Bitcoin. Everyone can use Ethereum. They are public. However, they have some uh, drawbacks and scalability is one of these drawbacks. You can't, you can't have 100 transactions per second on Bitcoin or Ethereum. It will not scale. And therefore, we have a couple of uh, private technologies that you can use in order to develop private blockchain solutions. And so Hyperledger by IBM, it is really an open source project. Stratis, Multichain, Quorum, I'm just throwing some technologies at you, you will probably not remember them, but just keep in mind that there is, uh, you can build things on the public blockchain, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, but if they are too slow, if you can't solve your problems using those blockchains, you can always use a private one and it will not be as secure. You will have to really design it in, in a way that works because it's very easy to have a useless private blockchain, but you can still do it. So there are public and private blockchains. Now let's talk about some, some examples. You're all very interested in, okay, how can this exactly be used? Well, we need to think about the pain points. So let's talk about, for example, manufacturing and supply chain. How, which pain points do they have that blockchain can solve? Well, when it comes to transparency, <coughs> transparency and accountability is a pain point present in many industries. And manufacturing and supply chain is one of them. Because when you go and buy a shirt at Huam or you buy some product, you do not know where this product was manufactur manufactured exactly. Did they use child labor? Did they use bad chemicals? There is no transparency and no accountability. And for example, if I am who I am and I'm selling um, uh, shirts and, um, and clothes, I want to show my customers that, look, you can scan this uh, QR code on the shirt and you can see exactly where this shirt has been, where it has been produced. And there's no, really no way to do it in a transparent way. A good question is, of course, why don't we just use a normal database? Well, normal databases are not transparent and they're not global. Normal databases can be changed. They can be altered by people who control those databases. And this is where blockchain technology can really be applied. Because just like in Bitcoin, no one can go and mess with the transactions. We can have blockchain technology used for tracking and um, having different players in a supply chain accountable for their business because there's no way for anyone to go back and change anything. The same thing is with origin tracking. So accountability and we want to track exactly where this particular product was produced. Real-time data is also extremely important because when you have normal databases and they're all spread out across different clouds, you have one cloud here, someone uses AWS, someone uses Google, someone uses their own uh, solution, we have information silos. The information is not real time. Someone has a uh, newer version, someone has an older version. And so in that sense, blockchain is a perfect technology for this particular pain point. And also when we're talking about certification and documentation, this might sound strange, but when you think about uh, when, when we manufacture uh, things such as fighter jets, or when we manufacture some kind of very delicate and the important things, all of the parts, all of the details of this particular product, they need to be certified and they need to be verified. And currently, manufacturing is losing millions and millions of dollars each year because the party before you in the supply chain, the company that you got your parts from, did not have the corre correct certification and did not have the up-to-date documentation. So this is huge. And 
uh, people are losing millions and millions when it comes to certification and documentation because we have information silos, we have files that are, uh, uh, um, that are not on, on the latest version and therefore blockchain can really be applied here. Next, healthcare, also huge. Because in healthcare, it is the same thing, information si if informational silos. If you just travel to another country, how do you show them your health records? Well, it is extremely hard, almost impossible before you can dial your own hospital. Maybe they can transfer the information somehow. But here we also want to remove the silos. We want to have a global system that everyone can use. And blockchain is perfect for that. And also, when it comes to sharing information, because when you get, get your, uh, your medicals, well, in the US, I'm not sure how it's here in Sweden, but in the US, the hospital will check with the insurance company. Do you have insurance to cover this particular medical that you're prescribed? Then they will check with the pharmacy. Do they have this particular medical thing in, in near your building, near, near your house? So it's a lot of things that happen behind closed doors, behind the curtain that you're not aware of. And whenever we have these, uh, these operations, they are extremely inefficient currently because they're all in information silos, all in different databases, all, all across different providers. And this is a huge problem that needs to be solved. And this is also a multi-billion problem globally when it comes to sharing data about your health. And this really helps as well for people who are uh, fleeing their country because uh, they don't have any hospital left in their country. How do you get health records from your uh, old country? Well, you can't, because the information is split up. We need a global infrastructure, highly available infrastructure, and blockchain is the perfect solution. Of course, the question is, how, how what about privacy? If I put my, my health data on the blockchain, what about my privacy? Well, it all can be solved with uh, uh, cryptography, and uh, this is only a technical detail that uh, we still have to figure out, but that is why we need more innovation in this space. Finally, customer loyalty, uh, a bit different approach here. And the thing is, my view is that in the future, all companies will have some kind of um, token, some kind of cryptocurrency. How many of you know how many cryptocurrencies are currently on the market? How many? Yeah, so it's almost 1,500. So it's many cryptocurrencies. The question is, why do we need so many? Well, because there are many different use cases. Of course, many of them don't really do useful things currently. Alfred mentioned scams and uh, this part, this negative part of the community as well. But in my view, tokens will be as normal as having a website today. Because if you think about it, already today, we kind of have tokens. You get loyalty points from Ikea. You get loyalty points from your airline. You get loyalty points from all kinds of different companies. And this is value, you're getting value. So soon enough, they will realize that if we just put it as a token on the blockchain, number one, it will benefit our business because now I can trade my Ikea loyalty points with your SaaS loyalty points. And when people can do that and exchange value with each other, they don't need to cash out at Ikea. So Ikea is more safe from the perspective that suddenly everyone comes and uses their loyalty points. And sometimes it can really put pressure on a business if customers all of a sudden, everyone uses loyalty points and now you need to sell your, your, goods, your goods very cheaply under a short period of time. So this will remove stress from the businesses. It will enable very, very high liquidity so that you can use your loyalty points and trade them on a global scale. So you as a customer will get a lot more value. And uh, the, thing is, the thing is, when it comes to money, we will have to rethink how money works as well, because soon enough, I will be able to pay at, at my restaurant with my loyalty points from Ikea, because the restaurant can use them to, to buy more, more food, for example. So different businesses might accept different loyalty points as well. And this, uh, this topic of money can change fundamentally. And we're kind of going back to when I had my cow, you had your cabbage, I, I tried to exchange, but it was difficult then. Now it's very easy because I have my Ica loyalty points on the blockchain. They're extremely easy to transfer, extremely easy to exchange. You have your SaaS airline, airline bonus, let's trade. And uh, uh, this really brings a whole new level of trading and what money really is. 
Uh, and also, it enables whole new business models when it comes to cooperation. Now, suddenly, SaaS can collaborate with IKEA and say, if you buy your SaaS ticket currently with IKEA points today, you will get 20% off. So a whole new dimension of cooperations. What else? Advertising. This is huge as well. Because what are the problems? Always we need to think about the problems. Lack of transparency. When you buy an ad on Facebook, you don't, you, how can you trust the numbers they are showing? Well, you, you cannot. Because just a few months ago, there was this story on Break It, maybe you've read it, that someone tried to target all the teenagers in Sweden on Facebook. And Facebook showed that you can reach 2 million teenagers in Sweden. But there, are not, th there aren't so many teenagers in Sweden when you just add everyone. So clearly, lack of transparency. A lot of money is uh, wasted, and we have a huge middleman. And middleman is something that blockchain removes. How many of you know about the social media network Steemit? Some of you know. So this is a social media network based on the blockchain. And the thing is, with such social networks, you can have a system without any middleman. I, as an advertiser, can pay you directly for your attention. We're doing business on the blockchain. We're doing business using decentralized applications that run on the blockchain. And so in that sense, removing middlemen will revolutionize advertising. Because suddenly we don't need Facebook that takes a huge cut and uh, gives us fake numbers and also breaches our privacy. So in that sense, advertising, social media will be disrupted as well. I'm sure you have many questions at, at this point. And the thing is, here at Ivan on Take, the channel, we really have a team right now, but we've compiled a 10-hour course. It's all about blockchain, how Bitcoin works under the hood, exactly how it works, how Ethereum works under the hood, how Bitcoin, Ethereum can be attacked, because you've heard about scams, you heard about uh, all of these data breaches, people getting hacked on Ethereum. Well, how does it happen? If you want to implement your startup on Ethereum, you need to know this. You need to know exactly uh, how you program a secure smart contract. Because it is very different from programming a web app. And many people come from web development and they start creating Solidity contracts on Ethereum, these decentralized applications. And of course, we see many hacks, many secur security breaches. Uh, token economy. We spend a lot of time talking about token economy. An example of token economy is, for example, loyalty points, as we mentioned, moving to the blockchain, whole new paradigm of loyalty points and how businesses can create their own cryptocurrencies in order to accelerate their business model, create more customer value. Another example is that currently you have investors, you have company, and you have customers, those three parties. And the thing is, sometimes these three parties have different interests. The investor, of course, wants to make money. The customer wants to have good products and services. The company in the middle tries to please both investors and customers. However, sometimes it is extremely hard. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, and the company needs to prioritize maybe the relationship with the investor and uh, create worse products, create worse services. Well, on the blockchain, these three parties become one party. A good example is Ethereum. If I own Ethereum cryptocurrency, I am an investor. But I can also participate in the creation of Ethereum. I can program the the, the protocol that is Ethereum. So in that sense, I'm also the company and I'm also the customer if I use Ethereum smart contracts, if I use the platform. The same is with Steemit, social media. I am an investor in the beginning and if I can participate and build <coughs> the infrastructure, I can participate and build the software. And in that sense, we're really removing these conflicts of interest. Also, I see your analysis, GitHub analysis, industrial use cases. So check out academy.ivanotech.com and in fact, you can get 50% off if you use the code KTH and you use it today. Okay, thank you so much for watching. This was a pleasure being here and uh, hope you learned something. Thank you for watching the first video of Starting Up. Starting Up is a series of lectures that will talk about how you can actually start your company and it will uh, be videos like this where you go deeply into a technical field like blockchain but it will also be about how to make patents, how to do your taxes, how to raise money and uh, many interesting topics just like this. It will be a perfect guide for starting a startup.